This video will conclude hypothesis testing with a second example and an example for you to do on your own. The average investments in road building for all of the regions in Quebec is $120 million. The eastern townships received an average in the last 16 years $139 million. Is this amount significantly different than the amount received by the other provinces? Again, the first thing to do is to check which statistic we are going to use. So, are you comparing to a sample mean or a population mean? You are comparing to a population mean. Do you have the standard deviation for the population? No. So, are you comparing a unique value or a sample mean to your population mean? You are comparing a sample mean and as such, this is the equation you must use to calculate your test statistic. Second, you must state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the absence of difference, so we state it like this. The eastern township's mean is equal to all of the other regions' mean. The question was, in the investment difference, because there's no clue of higher or lower, so of direction, this is a two-tailed test. So your alternative hypothesis will be like this. The mean Eastern Township's investment is significantly different from the mean investments in all of the regions in Quebec. Step 3 is stating the level of significance. Since nothing else was mentioned, we choose again alpha to be equal to 0.05. Step 4 is to find the critical value. To do so, first sketch what you are looking for. This is a two-tailed test with a 5% level of significance, so your sketch should look like this, with a 2.5% area in the right and left tail of your distribution. Our t-table gives us t-values for given degrees of freedom, remember this is n-1, and level of significances, so you must find the t-score associated to two-tailed test with a 0.05 level of significance. We'll be using the t-table, but not with the same heading we did for the confidence intervals. Notice that you have three top rows, confidence intervals, and one tail with alpha, two tails with alpha. In our case, we have a two-tailed test with an alpha 0.05, so the column we'll be using to find our t-critical t-value is this one here. Now our n is 16, so n minus 1 is 15, giving us a t-value of plus or less 2.131. So our limits are 2.131 on the right-hand side and minus 2.131 on the left-hand side. Step 5 is to compute the test statistic. Remember where we landed in the flowchart? That's how you have to compute your statistic. Now here is the equation, also with the correct numbers plugged in, giving you a t-score of 2.129. We'll keep the three places after the decimal, just because it will help us to compare with the value we have gotten from the t-table. Step 6 is to make the decision to reject or not the null hypothesis. To do so, let's bring back the sketch. How does 2.129 compare with the critical values of plus or less 2.131? That is correct. It is not into the critical region or rejection regions, although it is pretty close. But, because we have chosen previously to delimitate our regions with 2.131, we must stick with our decision. So, because 2.129 is not into our critical region, we do not reject the null hypothesis. It's important to say not rejected as opposed to accept the null hypothesis. This might seem finicky, but think of it as a trial. When the accused person is declared not guilty, we are not necessarily saying he or she actually did not commit the crime. We are saying we do not have enough evidence to prove that he or she did. So it's the same thing here. Step 7 asks us to summarize the results, so we can state that the eastern townships did not receive a significantly different investment for road construction than all of the other Quebec regions. Now it's your turn. 
So it is said that the average student depth in Canada from students graduating from a bachelor's degree is $19,500, with a standard deviation of $6,575. But there is a university that checked out with a sample of 50 students and noticed that the average of that sample is $17,900. So they want to know, is that significantly lower than the national student depth? Take a look at the flowchart here, pause the video, and try to find which statistic you are going to use. This is the correct answer, so you're looking for the z-score, but the version divided by the standard error. Now take a few seconds, pause the video again, and then jot down the statistical hypotheses. Here is the null hypothesis and here is the alternate hypothesis. Again, pause the video, take a few seconds to jot down what the level of significance should be. Since nothing else was mentioned, the level of significance would be 0.05. Here, take a few seconds to sketch what you are looking for for the critical region, and then find the critical value. Because this is a left tail test, this is where your critical region should be, and your critical value is minus 1.645. Now in step 5, take a few seconds, pause the video, and calculate your statistic value. You should come up with z of minus 1.72. Step 6, take a few seconds to verify if you will reject or not reject the null hypothesis you should reject the null hypothesis because the critical value is bigger than the calculated value. In your last step, pause the video and summarize the results. You should come up with a sentence that looks like the graduates from the small university have a significantly lower depth than the Canadian average. 